this is the last part of the chapter and this is the food preservation we are discussing about food preservation now what is the meaning of food preservation and what is the need of food preservation food preservation means to preserve food from getting spoiled why do we need to do this we have read all different microorganisms and we know now that these microorganisms are responsible for destroying the food but which kind of food the mostly the perishable food and we know we have studied that bacteria and other microbes microbes how they attack the food and how they are responsible for the destruction of food already when we talk about india especially our country is overpopulated and uh, that means huge number of people are there in the country and many of them do not get food also uh, meal for one time also in such kind of situation we cannot afford the destruction or the spoiling of food that is the reason we need to take certain uh, steps or certain uh, you know we need to follow certain measures which can prevent food from the attack of the microbes and this processes these processes okay maybe talk about the various processes actually which preserve the food which increases the food life see when we follow certain techniques maybe dehydration maybe canning maybe uh, sun drying maybe salting sugaring all these methods are the ways to prevent food from getting spoiled but how what is the criteria like what happens actually so what what happens why do we need to do this the the foods you know the life of the food get increased we can store food properly and the wastage of the food can be prevented either the all these processes which i am talking about which we are going to discuss now will uh, decrease the number of the uh, microbes or will stop their multiplication will destroy them so there are certain techniques which we need to study about so first of all we are discussing about food preservation which means to preserve to Say to to keep the food in a way that it can be prevented from the attack of the microorganisms. In this, first of all, we are talking about dehydration. We all know water is life. Wherever water is there, life is there. and without water life cannot survive life cannot survive no one can survive most of the microbes also need water and what do we want we want our food to be prevented we want our food prevent to pre we want our food to prevent from the microorganisms microorganisms need water that is the reason what do we do dehydration of food dehydration means to remove the water from that particular food remove the moisture from the food item so that the the life of the food can be increased what is uh, the procedure dehydration can also be done by using the machineries and if we talk about our the natural processes or the natural dehydration processes which we all follow is sun drying one of the very common and the natural process is sun drying now what are the food items which we can preserve in this way you might have observed your mother spreading the wheat 
when we purchase wheat can we fill the wheat directly into the containers no it has to be clean first of all all the unwanted materials from that uh, you know sack has to be removed and after cleaning also we cannot just uh, fill the uh, wheat into the containers we need to spread them into the sun and what will happen if we do not do so if we do not spread the wheat into the sun you will find that the wheat will uh, get spoiled within certain days only within few days only because it will give rise to many not only microbes many you know little organisms also and they will start eating all uh, the grains and the food will get destructed in the same way when we talk about dehydration so what can be uh, dehydrated what are the food items especially fish in uh, coastal areas if you uh, go you will find many people spreading the you know sheets and uh, drying the uh, fish so that they can store it and they can have they can keep it with them so sun drying is one of the method to stop the growth of the microbes to stop the growth of the other uh, you know small organisms also here basically we are talking about the microorganisms so i will focus more on that so sun drying is one of the method which removes or reduces the growth of the bacteria as we all know due to water due to the moisture the growth of the microbes will increase they will multiply and their multiplication that means they are they will be spoiling the food the food items which can be prevented by this methods are vegetables if you have seen uh, your granny or mother you know uh, keeping uh, fenugreek methi in sun please remember that many people you know what they do the methi or even the coriander you know dhaniya uh, they spread it in sun and when it, this methi and dhaniya they become dried very properly i am talking about methi uh, leaves i am not talking about methi dana i am talking about methi methi ki bhaji wala methi methi ka patta the leaves of the methi fenugreek when this is uh, allowed to be in sun after some time total moisture will be uh, gone it will get the it will get evaporated and the leaves will shrink these leaves after shrinking are grinded that means the they are converted into smaller smaller particles and even the coriander also it is then crushed and then stored stored in the uh, kitchens so this is a very natural thing which you know most of the people do with the coriander with the fenugreek and when we talk about vegetables i am giving these examples and even uh, if you have seen the boar boar are also dried and kept so that it can be used uh, in the form of the vegetables so there are certain vegetables which can be dried dried means that that means we are removing the moisture from that again the drying can be the dehydration can be done with the help of the machines also and the normal way of uh, dehydration is sun drying it can be done in both the ways so sun drying in case of vegetables and fish and other grains here in this process moisture can be removed by naturally drying
under the sun or even by now the second process we will be talking about we all know about the contains you know like the jams the jellies the pickles that means the we are talking about preservation by salt or sugar by salting or by adding sugar preservation by adding sugar or salt whenever the amount of the sugar or salt is more in any solution microorganisms won't be able to survive they will die they won't be able to survive if they enter into the solution which contains more of the salt or more of the solution see around if the solution is containing 70% of salt or sugar the survival of the microorganisms becomes impossible if we talk about salting we all know many things many food items which we eat are dried and salt is added in that take the example of the amla we all have amla throughout the year we eat amla and what it is it is sun dried and it is added with either sugar or salt we eat both kinds of amla even the sugary amla and the salty amla so salt adding salt or sugar to the food items is the again one of the very olden method of uh, preserving the food so this is again a olden method to preserve food the microbes could not or cannot enter microbes cannot enter in the sugar cannot enter means cannot survive cannot survive rather i will write cannot survive in the sugar or salty solution sugar and salty solution they cannot survive that means if the concentration of the sugar and salt is high and by using this method many things are preserved like amla beans even fish so there are many food items uh, even you know if you talk about the tamarind is preserved you might have seen your mother adding lot of salt to the tamarind and then filling into any particular container and even you know when the pickles are made first of all before making the pickles the uh, this raw mango has to be cut and then it has to be put into the solution of the salty um, salty solution or the sugary solution depending upon the type of the pickle which you want to eat or want to make so again this one is the one of the very important method of preservation which stops the growth of the microbes even i can write raw mango etc here also that what is the what is the aim either to stop the microbes from growing to kill them or stop them from their activities so here what is being done here microbes growth is totally stopped they are killed that means microbes are uh, removed or they are their survival is not there not possible over there that is the reason 
this pickles or you talk about gems and this you can eat and you can keep it uh, for the longer time. Now we will talk about oiling, use of oil. Again I will continue about the pickles. I will continue talking about the pickles. You all have seen pickles and you might have seen pickles uh, at your home uh, filled in a big jars also. Uh, when you talk about the pickles, the layer of the oil floats always. Mama, when your mother, see in India if we talk about especially, we all make pickles at home and everybody has seen the pickles filled up in the jar at home. And why your, ask your mother, why she has kept a layer of the oil, why she adds so much of oil to the pickle. It is just not for the taste, it is for the sake of the uh, prevention from the microbes. Why? Because these microbes cannot survive in such kind of situation. Such kind of uh, oily uh, situations, they are not able to survive and thus they do not multiply and kill also, they are killed. This is also one of the best way to keep the food safe. Oil do not allow the growth of the microbes. Oil do not allow the growth of the microbes. because they are not able to survive in such kind of atmosphere. Now we will move to the next one. If we talk about the modern methods, whatever we are doing nowadays is just the mechanical form of what we were doing in early days. Like if we talk about dehydration, this is the process which is being done or which the Indians are using from years and years. But if we talk about dehydration, which the way which is uh, followed nowadays, dehydration is the moisture is absorbed or the moisture is removed by the mechanical ways that means with the help of the machineries. Again sugar and salt, sugar and salt is being used by uh, us from years. And now just a way of using maybe the gems and all this have come, but the sorting is being used from years. So it is also very old and a common method to prevent the growth of the microbes. And the third one was the use of the oil, again very olden method. Now something I will be talking about the chemicals. So chemical preservatives or chemicals or preservatives. This there are certain chemicals which are used as a preservatives and these preservatives are so common which are used in almost all the food items. Yes, if we talk about any uh, food item, any which is pegged, perishable item, you will find over just uh, take the packet of the any edible which you eat in the form of the snacks also, you will find that they, it is written over there uh, food preservatives this and this. So food items uh, which are packed in the packets which are sold in a small package you know uh, maybe talk about the even the lace. So we, we will find the food preservatives have to be added in that. What is the role of food preservative? Again to preserve the food from uh, the microbes. If we talk about the chemical preservatives, uh, few are very very common like sodium benzoate. This is very common and is used sodium benzoate. It is used very frequently in lots of food items just to prevent them from being attacked by the microbes. Even uh, if we talk about potassium nitrate, 
meta by self at there is no place to write over here so there are various chemicals which are used as chemical preservatives to prevent the food from getting spoiled and this i will not say that these uh, uh, chemicals we were using for many 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 years as we are using these methods from many years but this one is the one which was uh, adapted after certain uh, you know like we can say like this is one of the modern method but again now this method is also in practice from many many years so chemical preservatives are again used to preserve the food from the microbes and to keep the same aroma of the food that means keep the same you know good smell has to be maintained so to keep the same aroma to keep the same taste of the food to keep the same color of the food certain preservatives has to be used and these are like i can talk about sodium benzoate is even one i can say that one of the very common chemical preservative which is used uh, every in like in you know, most of the food items now again if we talk about the modern methods radiations you know radiations also play a very important role radiations we all know x rays gamma rays beta rays alpha rays all these rays out of these particular rays are used for particular food items these rays are even you know the uh, what is the function of these rays why food uh, or certain food items are allowed to uh, or why these rays are allowed to pass through certain food items because these rays kills the microorganism one biggest question arises if they kill the microorganism do they destroy the food also no all the care and the precautions and the all scientific uh, things are followed when such kind of things are done and this is the practice which is not followed very popularly and it's not very very common also if we talk about potatoes you might have observed potato uh, you know it uh, the stem comes out the part the uh, growing part comes out very fast eye of the from the eyes of the potatoes some green part will come very fast and it will spoil the potato and if uh, the potatoes are allowed to expose to certain rays these kind of germination stops and does save the life of the potatoes and there are different food items which are again exposed uh, to the uh, certain kind of rays and which can prevent the growth of the microorganisms so we'll discuss more about this there are certain more points which are left but before that uh, need to please uh, note the points so that i can move to the next one we were discussing about use of preservative uh, use of radiations when food items are exposed when food item are exposed to high energy rays like beta alpha gamma the growth of microorganisms stops that means when the radiations are used so what will happen when the food item is exposed 
to the radiations which has very high energy the microbes get killed and uh, automatically the growth will be stopped and thus the food the life of the food get increased the life of the food get increased Now we will talk about the next point. We will be discussing now deep freezing. Deep freezing. That means to keep the food item at very low temperature. We all know we have studied that uh, there are certain conditions which we can call as a adverse condition for the growth of the microbes. Like very low temperature. Uh, uh, like very high temperature in this situation the bacteria or other microbes cannot survive only the spores can survive that too also till certain temperature and after that even they get destroyed the freezing freezing first of all to discuss with freezing we all are very well aware of we keep uh, vegetables fruits uh, milk cheese all these things in refrigerator why do we do so we have discussed that if the temperature increases especially in the summer season the microbes become more active they divide they multiply very fast the number increases and the food will get spoiled to destroy the microbes or to stop the growth of the microbes or we can say to prevent our food we need to use refrigerator in refrigerator the temperature remains low that is the reason the microbes cannot flourish they cannot survive but when we talk about deep freezing the temperature is very low over here and due to this the microbes cannot survive the microorganism cannot survive at very low temperature and thus get killed or inactive most of the time they are killed sometimes if we talk about refrigerator if you keep something in refrigerator it will be safe but as soon as you remove it out and keep it out it will be destroyed why because bacteria there in our refrigerator at home were not killed they were survive uh, they, they were able to survive but they were little they came into inactive phase but as soon as you remove the food particular food item and kept it out again the temperature become temperature became favorable for them and in this condition when the temperature was favorable again inactive microbes became uh, active and they started working they started divide, uh, decomposing the food or the whatever fruit or whatever and that is the reason deep freezing is applied specially for the food items like uh, maybe the vegetables why do uh, we get apples nowadays in all season please observe this we are uh, you will find apple especially i'm talking about the big cities you will be able to find apples almost in all the seasons mango uh, even uh, especially now i'm talking about big cities even mango you will be able to find in all season if you want to eat mango you can have it how because of the preserve the preserving methods we are using lot of methods to preserve the food and so that makes the food available in all the season even when the season is not there especially uh, with the case of apple if you observe apple it is available almost in all the season why is it available because it is 
kept in the deep freezing. So vegetables are also uh, kept like this. Even you know flowers are, uh, I should not write flowers over here, I will discuss that in another part. Vegetable, fruits, are um, kept under the freezing and the purpose is same to, to stop the growth of the microbes. So deep freezing is what it is to reduce the temperature to an extent that the microbes cannot survive, microbes cannot grow, they cannot multiply, they cannot divide, they cannot uh, spoil the food. Deep freezing is very common and used very often. Now, when we talk about reducing the temperature, what about the increasing of the temperature? Can we increase the temperature? When we are reducing the temperature, can we talk about increasing the temperature? We know, we have discussed that at the lower temperature, the microbes cannot survive. At the same time, they cannot survive even at very, very high temperature. They also need certain conditions to survive. Here in, D, see you talk about deep freezing or you talk about any other method in which the temperature is increased. What actually is done? Actually the enzymes become inactive. Exi enzymes become inactive and they, they are left, uh, like they cannot destroy the food now. When the enzymes become inactive, the food will be saved. Now we will be talking about the next method and that is pasteurization. Pasteurization I hope we all know about this. It is a method where specifically milk is preserved, it is sterilized, you know even you know milk is not sterilized completely but half the way. It is the method in which the milk is kept a very high temperature uh, maybe from 60 to 80 degrees Celsius only for very little time maybe 15 to 20 seconds and then suddenly it is uh, cooled down. So what is happening you know in the so much of uh, change in temperature first raising it to 60 to 70 degrees Celsius and then again, uh, again lowering the temperature the microbes fail to adjust, the microbes fail to adjust the temperature and they are killed. So we will discuss about the pasteurization now. It is the method in which the milk is heated at the very high temperature it can uh, vary from 60 to 80 degrees Celsius very high temperature from 60 to 80 degree Celsius and is suddenly cool. So what is pasteurization here the milk is heated to a, it is kept to a very high temperature maybe from 60 to 80 degrees Celsius and then suddenly it is brought to a very low temperature. This change the microbes fail to adjust and so they get destroyed. This is a very common method to preserve milk and this was given by we all know it was given by Louis Pasteur.
Louis Pasteur he gave this method for the first time and now we all know about the pasteurization that uh, it is a very useful process to kill the microbes from the milk to remove the microbes from the milk. Now we will talk about some other method and that is vacuum drying. This method again includes the drying of the moisture from the milk. Vacuum drying is again the method I am talking about vacuum drying. What is vacuum drying? Vacuum drying, drying is again a method where the moisture is removed hmm? and it has got a lengthy process actually and if we talk about the milk powder, milk powder is one of the example of vacuum drying where the moisture is removed from the milk so that the life of the milk remains high. And we all know milk powder remain can uh, we can store milk powder for much much longer time in comparison to the milk. And when the milk powder has to be converted into milk the boiled water has to be added into that. So that again uh, it prevents the entry of the microbes and again you can have the milk as per your requirement the milk powders quantity can be increased or decreased. This is also very important as uh, milk powder is very commonly used in most of the uh, bakeries and even in the uh, certain special kind of uh, food material or maybe certain special uh, kind of uh, uh, you know uh, subjis and uh, the I am talking about the hotel specially they use milk powder uh, they add uh, milk powder in the various kinds of uh, paneer vegetables. So this was all about the milk drying now we will talk about certain uh, other methods and uh, which includes the canning. Now this is also very common and we all know that what is canning in canning the food is stored in the tin and as discussed earlier the tin is already sterilized it is made free of microbes so that the when the food see the cooked food it can be cooked it can be depending upon the food item which we are talking about. So actually what is canning cooked food is sealed in a tin. And here the tin which is used is sterilized that means it is already made free of the microbes and whatever cook again I am saying it depends upon the food what you are talking about if uh, it requires cooking whatever then the food is cooked and then again it is uh, sealed into the tin containers. But as we have discussed earlier the tin food has to be taken care of so that the entry of the microbes can be checked so that you can keep yourself safe from food poisoning and other certain uh, you know side effects because the can the canned food when it is open it comes under the contact, uh, contact of the air and in case if a uh, wet spoon is used uh, what what will happen it will give a tremendous growth uh, it will increase the growth of the microbes and there are more chances of this food of causing uh, like food poisoning and even uh, the thing is that if the cane food is utilized once it is opened once has to be utilized very very fast very very soon which can prevent the growth of the microbes and which can keep you safe. We have discussed many ways of 
keeping the food or preserving the food safely even boiling is one of the method you know boiling is one of the method to keep the microbes away uh, you might have observed your mother again again uh, you know heating the vegetable if she wants to keep it till evening in summer especially again again i am not saying that again again she is you have to she has to uh, heat but after certain intervals she will uh, heat the vegetable so that the microbes which have entered into that may vanish may be killed it's very very important to preserve the food as we have discussed that the we could not we do not want the food to be wasted just by taking certain uh, points following certain points the life of the food can be increased okay now we will talk about the need of food preservation why do we require the food to be preserved already we have discussed in discussing food preservation uh, methods we have discussed various methods like sun drying or we can say dehydration then irri irradiations or the use of the radiations and then um, deep freezing boiling actually boiling when we boil the food the microbes get killed and when the food is uh, boiled or when the heat is increased uh, it is increased till 110 degrees celsius or when it is you when the autoclaves are used or when the pressure cookers are used in using the in cooking the food or when the pressure cookers are used even the spores get killed the, even the spores cannot survive in the uh, very uh, they cannot survive very high temperature like more than 110 degrees celsius so even boiling i should write over here that boiling is also one of the method or high temperature high temperature is also one of the method that means to take the food to a very to a particular temperature where the all microbes can uh, get killed or they become totally inactive so we have discussed various methods i was discussing that we have discussed sun drying or dehydration we have discussed the use of the radiations then boiling freezing deep freezing use of salt and sugar as we have seen in the case of the jams pickles fish fish meat uh, all these can be preserved beans even uh, then we have uh, discussed about the pasteurization vacuum drying canning so all these methods are used uh, to keep the food items safe from the growth of the microorganisms so just now a small two three points are left that why do we need food to be preserved first of all it increases the life of the food it becomes very easy to store the food it keeps the nutritive value of the food as it is it saves the food from the destruction or it saves it saves the food from the from getting spoiled these all are the reasons why do we need to preserve the food so even if you remember the gist of these points that why do we need food preservation to prevent from getting spoiled or to increase the life of the food or we can even write that transportation becomes easy the food a particular food can be transferred from one place to another or is if we do not follow food preservation apples we do not grow uh, cannot we cannot grow apples here but we are able to eat apple very often very common it's a most one of the very common food item uh, fruit i mean to say how we are getting it even though we are we do not have in our city we do not have apple trees in our city how do we get just because of the transportation the food the fruits are transferred from or transported from one place to another just because it is uh, the person who is transporting the fruits are able to keep them safe and why he is able to keep them safe just because of the uh, methods of 
food preservation. So transportation becomes easy. The nutrients of the food will remain as it is. So all these are the reasons why do we need to preserve the food. This was all about the food preservation. This was the last topic of this chapter. Uh, now we will be discussing the question answers. Thank you.